offering my voice here as a representative of the media, which is often, I think, fairly criticized for being a big part of the problem when it comes to justice for women, equality for women, how women are objectified, how we objectify ourselves. I think a lot about where that problem is stemming from. Our responsibility is to be storytellers. And why aren't we telling the stories that are educating the masses to empower them to avoid a lot of these situations? Seems like that's really part of the healing process is communities coming together and empowering themselves through the power of a group and understanding that they don't have to put up with that shit anymore. Why isn't that coming from the media? Why aren't women in particular being empowered from a young age from the media? So I'm really interested in that and I think it's not entirely surprising since within the media, within Hollywood, they can't even figure out their own system of injustice. Um, and that is something that I confront on a day-to-day -day basis as any woman working in any level of any part of Hollywood will tell you. It's really hard to get stories made that are about women, not just women being obsessed with men or supporting men. And it's really hard to get men to be a part of films that are about women in a leading role. I'm really interested in how we can adjust that, considering that it's all based on the demand. Movies are made based on what people are asking for. Magazines are sold based on what they think people are asking for. So really the power is in our hands, uh, and it's just a matter of really asking for it much louder. I don't know if any of you have been to some of these live reads at LACMA, where uh, a classic film is read by actors live on stage who just sit and read the script. And we did one recently of American Pie. So American Pie, but we reversed the gender roles. So all women played men, all men played women. And it was so fascinating to be a part of this because as the women took on these central roles that had all the good lines, therefore all the good laughs, all the great moments, the men who had joined us to sit on stage started squirming rather uncomfortably, and got really bored because they weren't <laughs> used to being the supporting cast. And it was fascinating to feel their discomfort, to discuss it with them afterwards when they said, this, it's boring to play the girl role. <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah. You think? Welcome to our world. It was also fascinating to see how the movie was just as entertaining and hilarious and exciting with women saying these roles, that it didn't seem awkward to see a woman saying one line, that it was something that clearly should be done more often, that when we switch the roles, as has been done with movies, you know, many of you probably know that in Alien, Sigourney Weaver's role was written for a man, in Salt, Angelina Jolie's role was written for Tom Cruise, these things when reversed do prove to be just as exciting and entertaining with women in leading roles. But I think it's something that is still just at the beginning stages in Hollywood. Um, it's very difficult to get a movie financed with a woman in a leading role. And that's something that now as a producer, I'm starting to really become familiar with. So these are things that I have to change in order for the media to be a positive force for people all around the world because it is incredible the reach of media. I was in Senegal recently on a, I'm, this sounds like I'm making it up, but I swear to God, on a camel in Senegal in the middle of the desert when the guy who was helping me not fall off my camel said, you're Dr. 13 on house. <laughs> and I just realized like, we have to do a better job of representing different lifestyles and women in, in empowered roles because literally everybody is seeing the stuff that we put out, so we have to be more responsible about what we do put out.